My name is Mia Monet King and I am an analytics and special projects intern with the membership department here at MoMA where I focus on diversity, equity, accessibility, and inclusion. Today we are looking at The Persistence of Memory by Salvador Dali painted in 1931 and donated to the MoMA collection in 1934. And what I've always enjoyed about Dali is that whenever you look at one of his paintings, you see something different every time. There are layers and layers upon motifs, different images he's embedded through here that the subconscious brain doesn't always pick up on. But if you really stop, focus, and look at the painting, you can see every time you look at them. This painting is relatively small. It's about the size of a piece of paper. For the bottom three-fourths, the foreground, it's a dark olive tone with a kind of like square block. And on that block, you have a gold wristwatch covered in ants, a melting gold rim clock with a fly on the face, and a olive tree also draped with another one of those melting clocks. In the middle, you have an amorphous face that some say, you know, the side profile of Dolly as a self-portrait that kind of morphs into a tongue over a bed of rocks. And then in the far distance, that top one fourth of the painting, you have a stylized version of Catalonia cliffs. Dolly was very inspired and fascinated by Freud's work on psychoanalysis and how the subconscious influences our everyday actions and thoughts. And that studying of Freud's work is actually what inspired Dolly's coinage of the paranoid critical method, which is what he used to produce a lot of his surrealist works. And that method was typically him self-inducing a state between sleep and being awake. And what he would do is he would go into that state, surrender to his subconscious the images he saw there, and then upon returning would paint what he had seen in that plane. And he considered that as bringing his subconscious into reality. Reflecting on current times, and specifically the title of this painting, The Persistence of Memory. In recent events, we haven't been able to probably make as many of the memories we thought we'd be able to make. Something that is impactful, something that's core to forming who you are and who you're going to be. I think we've still had a lot of those moments. We're still processing the things that happen to us, and though they might not be as notable as we think a typical memory would be, they definitely still leave their mark in our subconscious.